what a wonderful movie this is. And I'm so glad both of you got to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys know each other prior to this? I mean, you both did Shark, so I'm imagining you worked together before. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Nash. Hi, Nash. Hi, Smith. Um, Yes, we did. We've known each other for years. um, And we have worked together before in, like, funny little theatres and television television show um, back in Oz. So, yeah. We went to high school together. Wow. And you graduated just a few years ago. So uh, it's, these careers are just going nuts. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> uh, what brought you to this project? I'll start with Crew, uh, who plays Red. What brought you to this? Um, I wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I wrote it for myself very specifically. Um and I wrote, I write to figure out something. So I wanted to figure out why I wanted success and what it looked like and why I wanted it and why I wasn't getting it. And if I got it, would I know that I had it? And um, so I started with that premise and, and it, pretty quickly I realized what, like, what does that look like? And I was like, mm, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is, is what I consider, you know, a real success story. Mm. And this was over 10 years ago. So that's what I started with. I started with that premise. Bringing Rose in, I mean, uh, as your high school friend, uh, I would imagine there was hardly any audition. <laughs> well, it, it coincided. A crew wrote this screenplay maybe 10 years ago. And at the time we had friends who had little production companies in Sydney and we decided, we, you know, let's make our own production company. Let's start something up and let this be the impetus for that. So we started Dollhouse Pictures in 2014 and, um, that with Jess, Jess Carrera, who is the producer on Seriously Red, and Gracie Otto, the director, who's the director of Seriously Red, who's in, who's in the company, and Shannon Murphy. So it all sort of coincided at the same time. And, um, yes, it's been, it's been a long journey. And I knew we knew I would do something in the movie, you know, acting-wise, but we weren't sure what. And this just worked out so well because it was unexpected. It was, you know, insanely fun for me to do. <laughs> And um, I think it's it, it's it was a really you know unexpected way to get me in, to get to get m- m- me in the film. As 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 the writer of of the film crew, I mean, there's got to be something great about hearing the words that you wrote actually being spoken by your cast. Yeah, you know, I didn't overly get that feeling. I, I <laughs> uh, it was more so. Like sitting on the st- like the stoop of my trailer, looking out and seeing like Rose kind of like scratch a wig, and like <laughs> and then um, Daniel who plays the Kenny, uh, Kenny Rogers impersonating him kind of come out and like it was it was a, I, I had so many moments of just sitting around <laughs> so, <yeah>. going <gasps> like look what I made you do like a little bit <laughs> like that but um, just the physicalities and the and just the creative explosion that everyone got to do, um, that was really amazing for me. But and but the hearing the script, I didn't kind of, it didn't overly, it just sort of felt like, oh, this is normal. Yeah. Uh, and I, also, you know, I'm, I'm up for, we're all kind of, um, we're all really theatre actors. Mm-hmm. So I am definitely was up for um, improv and, and, I, and we all knew what the story was. And it was probably different. I mean, Rose... Rose is an EP on the film and she, we all know story and we all know what we're doing and what we're saying and what we want and what it needs to be in the tone. And so um, maybe if I had a, my next project, I might go, oh, these are my words. Mm. But, yeah. Mm. Well, so there's a lot of improv in the film then? There is some. There's some, sure. yeah. There, yeah, I think we kept it loose, but but it wasn't, you know. Like, it wasn't a, a free for all. No, but, uh, yeah, but there were moments where we could, you know, like when I'm doing all the Elvis. Sta- uh, there's a sequence where my character is um, hosting the coffee club and you know talking to the guests, and that was all sort of a little bit improv within the script and going back and forth. So moments like that that felt right. Yeah, mm. I think Bobby Cannavelli is a international treasure. <laughs> Me too. There, I said it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I'd like him to have a star on that boulevard. 
Yeah, well, he deserves he deserves two. Uh, I met by I, I know that you you you're very close to him, Rose. But I, I mean, I met Bobby on a Station Agent years ago, and and yeah. uh, he is just a full bore uh, performer. I mean, he I know, just he's such a boss of nature, and he yeah. just adores crew and. We were, we, you know, we went to Australia. He, where it was the pandemic, twenty twenty, and um, you know, everything was shutting down. But Australia at that point hadn't been hit by by the coronavirus, and he was shooting Nine Perfect Strangers with Nicole and Melissa McCarthy, and so on. And um, we we just all of a sudden we put the film into high gear, and we got the thing made while we were all up there in the Northern Rivers area and shot it in you know twenty something days, and yeah. You know, when you know a lot of the people on the set and the crew is 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 there a shorthand that's already in place does it make the movie go a little bit easier there was a lot of joy on the film i remember yeah. you, particularly you saying that to me yeah everybody was invested i think everyone was really um grateful to be working and grateful to be in the room with each other um and the movie certainly attracted like-minded people mm. so um and because it it is such a uh interesting world mm. um everyone could really create in their own um different departments yeah. yeah so everyone said it's rare you know of being on a set where it's just like whoa this is really blessed and yep. there's an energy here and everyone just wants to tell this story no one's sort of going oh you know i'm waiting to go home or everyone was just really on board for the ride and that's 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 not that's always the not case. Not always the case. Yeah, and it really came from crew and her. This being such a passion project for her, and thanks, mate. And no, oh, listen, mm. and her, you know, generosity and spirit toward. It starts from the top. You know what I mean? If the lead person is a jerk, then it's going to be a punish. It does, and I think I think the the themes in this. I mean, as people, you know, look at it, they go, "Well, that's a world though," um, but it truly is universal because everybody goes through this. Everybody wants you know, they have a dream, they have a change that they want to make, they, they, they want to step out of themselves. And I think this speaks to all of that. It really yeah. does, especially the social media side of society today and filters and, um, and wanting to be more like, you know, this reality person or this famous person or this rock star or mm. um, uh, it's, um, yeah, we, we, that's that's certainly the intent is that, that that everyone can relate to it and everyone has tried to, different masks and mm. everyone is hopefully still going back coming to back to the, themselves and the better version of themselves and we learn different things to, you know impersonating different people mm. um whether it's your parents or mm. uh, in our final moments uh what are the audience's uh, uh reaction to seriously red well we've only had one yeah, last night. Yeah, we had our first screening last night, which was highly charged, yes. and emotional for all of us. But um, you know, the film I think is kind of extraordinary in the way it, the first sort of part of the film is very much a, a, a kind of a, a hard comedy and, and broad at times, but it really that's raucous and the audience is laughing and then sort of settles and it becomes kind of really an examination of all these things we're talking about, like hunger, fame, fear, vulnerability, all these things that are you know more serious kind of themes and um but i think by then people are really they're in and they're laughing for different reasons and listening for different reasons mm. so i felt like that landed last night yeah i want to thank you both for taking the time to talk with me i just adore both of you and you're my heroes and have fun in uh, <laughs> in, in austin texas there's plenty to eat i bet yeah, yeah. thank Bobby. you thanks tony thanks bye-bye have fun